many of us, online shopping has become like second nature. We love the convenience and the selection. But if you're not careful, your personal information can be at risk in cyberspace. Your name, your address, even your credit card numbers are susceptible to the deft hands of a hacker. Watch how fast it can happen. Um, you can steal passwords, usernames, uh, steal files. This is Gary Morse. Gary is a computer security expert who knows everything about hacking. Hackers set up tools that basically go around checking doorknobs to see if they're, if they're open. The safety challenge asked him to show us how easily a hacker can steal information right out of your computer. If you have an average cable or DSL connection at home, chances are your machine or machines at home are being scanned between 20 and 30 times every single day for vulnerability, every day. Fact is, we're all vulnerable. Reports of hacking-related identity theft are on the rise, up 27% in the last two years. One of the most common online scams can be surprisingly hard to spot. Emails from phony websites that get you to hand over personal information. One of the names for it is called phishing, spelled with a PH. When a hacker goes phishing, he sends a bogus email that appears to be a message from a legitimate web business, but it's actually from a hacker. When you respond, you're really sending your information directly to the hacker. The safety challenge asked Gary to go on his own phishing expedition. To do it, he creates a very realistic but very fake website. So this is a site that we've crafted to look like Amazon.com, and it looks fairly real. If you look up here at the address, you'll see it's actually not Amazon.com. He'll use it to send a bogus email to our next volunteer who regularly shops on the real Amazon.com. Now, anyone who answers Gary's email will be handing over their secret password and personal credit information to Gary, not to Amazon.com. Hackers will send these out literally just fishing for people that will answer these emails. And if you answer it, you're actually giving away your private information. We gave Gary our volunteer's email address. My name is Gabriel Tolliver. We asked Gabe to let us film him while shopping online. He lives and works at home in Brooklyn. Gary is more than eight miles away in an office in Manhattan. Will his scam work? Gabe buys a book on the legitimate Amazon.com site. Seconds later, Gabe gets Gary's fake email in return. <laughs> Gary's email looks like an offer for a free gift, but to claim it, Gabe must supply his username and password does, Gary will have access to Gabe's credit information via his Amazon account. This is the critical moment. Will Gabe notice that the email is a fake? We're waiting for the person to fill out our form. Gabe doesn't even hesitate. It takes him just a few seconds to fill in his information. And bingo, there it is on Gary's screen. There, now we got him. We now have his credentials. Username and password. He typed it in. Safety challenge alert. Before you buy anything online, make sure the site's address corresponds exactly with the company's official web address. Next, Gary sends a disturbing email to Gabe. You can scan. We now have your username and password. Thanks. What the f is this? I got you. Okay, and what? This is what. Now that we have the information, I can certainly go back on to the site and buy whatever I like as him. I'll probably get, be able to get into everything else, like his bank statements and everything else. When Gabe learns that this has been a setup, he is stunned. He had no idea he was vulnerable to a hacker. I mean, it totally blew my mind. Like, wait a minute, what the? F Even worse, most people use the same username and password for all their online work giving hackers easy access to all of your accounts. Safety challenge alert. Choose different passwords for different online activities. For our next online scam, we took Gary to a park where he and anybody else can access a wireless computer network. Places like these with free wireless access to the internet allow computers to communicate much like cell phones. With two laptop computers in hand, we challenged Gary to hack into the computer of our unsuspecting volunteers seated 50 feet away. My name is Vincent Lai, and I'm a systems tester. We asked Vincent to let us film him working online during his lunch hour. He suspects nothing. 
First, Gary has to locate Vincent in cyberspace. Software that scans the air for web activity shows Gary that a new computer has just gone online. Gary believes it's Vincent. This could be him right here. Gary now has the address of Vincent's computer. Oh, wait. 129. Ha, ah, wait. Got it. I got him. He hacks into Vincent's computer by sending him what appears to be an ordinary email. But it actually contains a program which, when open, can invade Vincent's machine, giving Gary total control of it. And that means online, Gary can literally become Vincent. It takes Gary just a few minutes, but it works. Gary's got him. I'm going to put this, a file on his desktop to prove that we have control. The proof is a Pac-Man eating Vincent's screen. Even Vincent, a systems tester, has no idea what's going on. Looking for, looking to figure out what's happening. Um, we've got another file. You, you have been hacked. Great. Gary can now see all of Vincent's files on his own computer. That means Gary can use them as if they were his own. Bank files, personal files, all of it. He can change them or even delete them. The bottom line, a real thief who hacks into your computer can inflict serious damage. Vincent still doesn't know what's happening, but his computer no longer responds to his commands. Vincent is panicking. After eight minutes of torture, Gary goes over to tell him what's happened. Uh, you Vincent? I am, yes. How you doing? I'm Gary. Hey, good to meet you. I'm hack your machine. <laughs> oh, I see. Vincent thought he'd installed all the right software to protect his computer from hackers. I thought I had everything set up to just keep the casual onlookers away, but I realized that there, there are people out there who want to come in here badly enough. If you're not vigilant, if you're not aware of this on a regular basis, uh, chances are, yes, you're going to be compromised. Safety challenge alert. If you receive an email from an unknown sender, don't open it. Keep in mind, every time you get on your computer, you're leaving yourself open to a hack attack that could cost you hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Security is, uh, is an ongoing thing. You need to be constantly vigilant to know about what sort of attacks are out there, whether it's having a virus detection system, having a firewall, um, securing your own computer. All of these steps uh, need to be uh, taken into consideration and updated on a regular basis. If you're shopping online, the best way to protect your privacy is to stick with name brand companies. They have the tightest security on their sites. And if you don't think your computer is properly equipped to guard against hacking, go to a major retailer and buy a virus detection program and a firewall. They're worth it.